It is an honor and a privilege for me to be able to share ideas with you today. And I appreciate your taking the time from your busy schedules to be here so that we can together discuss the many exciting opportunities that are opening up in Costa Rica. I had the opportunity yesterday to visit two public schools and to observe the teachers in several classrooms. And I was deeply impressed by the caring and the commitment that they showed to the children. This is a tremendous foundation on which to build. I've devoted my life to understanding ways that technology can aid teachers with the many, many difficult challenges that they face. And I have never been more excited about the opportunities with technology than I am today, even though I've been working in the field for more than 30 years. So I want to share with you where that excitement comes from. We live at a very interesting time in the history of education because information and communication technologies are doing three things at once. They're changing the kinds of knowledge and skills that society wants from our graduates. I have the dubious distinction of holding an endowed chair at Harvard in a field in which I've had exactly one course in my life. The course was in 1967. It was in a programming language, and it was on punch cards. And I hated that course so much, it drove me out of the field for the next eight years, only to return when small computers like the Apple showed me the potential that was available. That's not an unusual story for people in my generation. Many of us hold jobs today that we were not fully prepared for by our educations long ago. It is the typical story for our children and our students. They are growing up into a world in which they will hold not just multiple jobs, but multiple careers. And many of those careers don't yet exist. So how do we prepare students for careers that don't yet exist? That is a fascinating challenge. At the same time, technology is creating this situation in the workplace it is also changing the ways that we can teach and learn, and we're here to talk about that today. And it's changing the characteristics of the learners of every age who come into classrooms, whether they're classrooms of graduate students at Harvard or classrooms of public school students, even down to the elementary level. Because of what these students are doing outside of academic settings, for communication, for entertainment, for personal expression. Technology is steadily shaping their lives, and with each passing year, that influence gets stronger and stronger, changing how they like to learn and changing what their strengths are in terms of learning. To illustrate this, I want to show you a very short video that summarizes these three trends. This is the very beginning of a video that Panasonic created. And you have to watch closely because it's only 45 seconds long. And for me, this video helps to illustrate that these three trends are not distinct from one another, but they're richly interwoven. 
that students are doing things outside of school that do prepare them for 21st century work, but only if we take advantage of that in the ways that we teach inside of school. I worry about my own children. I have a daughter who's 22, who is one more year to go of college, a son who's 17, who is starting his junior year in high school, and a little daughter who is nine that we adopted from India, who is starting the fourth grade. And they're growing up into a world very different than I did. I was prepared to compete with a student sitting across the aisle from me, or perhaps one from a different region within my own country. They have to compete with very smart, motivated students throughout the world who, if they are fluent in modern media, can hold many kinds of desirable jobs. And I worry about whether the education system in my country is preparing them for that kind of competition. What makes possible for someone anywhere in the world now to be part of the knowledge economy is the evolution of information technology. And this is something that is far from complete. We all live in a time of incredibly rapid advance in these technologies. Whether we look at the level of devices with things like the cell phone, or the level of the applications that run on these devices, like educational simulations, or the level of the media that glue together the different applications, such as the World Wide Web, which glues together many things connected to learning, or whether we look at the level of the infrastructures that deliver media like the World Wide Web to us, we see on any given day changes happening at these levels that can be powerful in terms of education. And so we have to be constantly flexible and creative in thinking and rethinking our approaches as new items become available for us. I worry about that advance in technology in terms of my own children and my students. I have a colleague, Dick Murnane at Harvard, who is an economist of education. He and a colleague at MIT wrote a book called The New Division of Labor. Now what economists mean by division of labor is which jobs are done by machines and which jobs are done by people. And we've seen during our lifetimes jobs that were formerly done by people now being done by machines. For example, the jobs of many bank tellers. Levy and Murnane go a step further. They argue, I think convincingly, that within another generation, there will only be two skills left that people do much better than machines. One of those skills they call expert decision making. I don't think that's a good description because there are, in fact, many kinds of expert decision-making that machines do well. What they mean by expert decision-making is what the man who fixes your car does if every diagnostic system shows that the car is working well, but it isn't. In other words, expert decision-making is what we do when our standardized methods of solving problems fail and we have to improvise. Complex communications, the other skill that they identify, is what teachers and educators do for a living. We explain complicated ideas to a wide variety of people in many different ways. 